All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of the Ashish David Show. Uh, season three is now on. Um, you know, season two was great as it is, and now more and more people from all around the world want to get on the Ashish David Show, and I'm so excited to have all of you. Uh, if you want to know what the show is about, it's about people talking, sharing their experiences, and hopefully, you know, our audiences in 65 different countries on 12 different global platforms are having a fun time as well. Well, the beautiful lady that is with me right now also got in touch with me, and that is how she got on the show. It's really that simple. Okay, by the end of the show, you'll get to know how you can also be a part of the show, just like my current guest is right now. But right now, it's time for us to welcome our freshest guest on the show. Please introduce yourself and tell us your name. Hi, everyone. I am Sneet Juleja. And before I introduce myself, let me thank Arti for this amazing show that has been going and... Uh, I, of course, would want to be a part of this exciting, this energy that is already transferred to me. And uh, so I am working as a self-love and a self-expression catalyst, wherein I help people shorten their journey to self-love and unleashing their rawness. There is a beauty in rawness, edited versions of what are in. So that is what I try to do. And I also work as a uh, creativity coach and uh, an artist soon going to launch a couple of uh, creative projects. And I really uh, want to add one thing here, why I was so excited to be a part of R.C. David's show. Uh, because I'm aware, you know, a person who is a feeler, who goes by feeling. So the moment he posted about the show and what his intent was, it felt right. It just felt right. And because that is how I live my life also, do conversations that really... Uh, you know, add light to people's lives, our lives. So that is what his intent is also. So we are aligned and here we are. And hope we both are able to, you know, create some magic today for you all. Well, so, Preet, yeah. uh, welcome again to the Ashish David Show. How does it feel to finally be on the Ashish David Show? Oh, it feels so exciting. <laughs> I'm feeling so energetic, so amazing. So, so honored actually. Thank you. Absolutely. We are always, you know, uh, up for uh, having exciting people who are positive and, you know, who bring their own brand of energy to the show because uh, eventually that is all the show is about. It's just about transfer of energy. You do it, I do it, and we do a lot of people do it, and those are a lot of people do it further. So before we start, uh, you know, the usual question that I ask people is, uh, Preet, tell us about, you know, how you got to know about the Ashish David show and, uh, uh, you know, what made you think that, you know, it'll be a good idea for you to sort of, you know, associate with us and join the show? Okay. Uh, so, as I said, I think I'm a, you know, complete healer person. I go by my intuition and how I get guided to by the universe. So, uh, there is one favorite quote which I would love to share with you all, which is, uh, I opened all the doors because I didn't know where the light cell comes from. So, of course, I had been looking forward to connecting with the right kind of people and uh, because I realized that it's not good to work in illusion. It's good to work as a whole, to work together, join hands. And I am always open to, you know, connect to people. And I uh, I came across your Facebook post. You were in my friend list already. And I came across your post and... I was like, okay, now this, that's my next step. That's my answer, <laughs> you know. So that's a beautiful platform you have. And uh, my purpose, uh, I have not, um, you know, thought of a specific purpose, so to say, that I'm going to keep this out of the show. Because if I am putting across a specific purpose, yes, I might need it. But at the same time, I may not be open to see what else is coming for it. So I am here with an open purpose, with an open heart, open mind. Let's see what flows and uh, there we are. Tell someone, you know, who doesn't know anything about Preet, ki bhai Preet, how would you describe yourself? What is it that you do? Okay, that's a very interesting question. When people ask me about this, uh, I take a pause. Because I don't want to put myself in a bracket as in what do I do, but... Uh, as I said in the beginning, I help people come closer, uh, you know, closer to themselves. Because uh, last year, I came across many, many youngsters who were at the world of taking their life. 
and in fact i uh, had been a part of the many suicide help lines earlier also and i had been working as a trainer for over 15 years so i uh, it's it's been like you know i've always worked with people but now uh, my journey has become more specific more clear in terms of now i try to bring uh, bring people closer to themselves so that they begin to love life again they are no more abandoned you know they are no no more living life from their abandoned self they accept themselves they understand who they truly are they are able to create a path which is meant actually for them also uh, you know last year i did a talk show during lockdown where in uh, just like you i connected with many people who started giving their input to help people during lockdown um during uh, you know after a couple of episodes i started getting calls from people that the show has saved our life and then that is when i knew that i am on the right path because i uh, come from a history of uh, trauma <laughs> if i should put it like that i have been through you know all sort of uh, emotional trauma physical trauma financial and many other things and i was i also went to clinical depression and that is when i remember i told my doctor a few years back that i am not going to take any medicine i am going to heal myself so that is where my journey started i started healing myself i started loving myself more and i started sharing that with people so i talk to my stories to my retreats i do retreats uh which helps people express themselves fully i always was living in you know a uh, a place of guilt and shame and talking about things where they were considered as a taboo i was not able to use uh, you know the terms that i was supposed to use i was not able to wear what i wanted to wear and uh, of course that uh, that is what led to you know clinical depression besides many other things and i dusted off my clothes i was like it's enough uh, if everyone else is capable of living life which is abundant which is uh, you know full of love i'm sure we all have the potential to be able to do that so i thought some you know uh, earlier i was uh, doing all sorts of behavioral training i was certified as a trainer and i'm also certified in neuro linguistic programming i practice that, that as well and i also do art uh, but that was like a big umbrella and eventually i could come closer to the niche i wanted to work in self love authentic self expression it is beyond just you know stepping up on the stage and talking it's bringing out who you are what feels aligned what feels right to them balancing your energies you know expressing fully and um, that is and when i talk about the you know, creativity course that also comes with a twist it's more creative it's not like simply you know uh telling people how to create form for solutions or come up with new ideas using mind maps of course these are beautiful techniques but at the same time when i talk about creativity when i talk about my retreat i use all the five elements okay the five elements as in your air water space fire and wood so uh and earth so i utilize all these elements i use what is there within that person to bring out authentic creativity which is specific to that person and uh, how i reached there is after years of my own experience this is this has been a long experiential journey i personally have been to and that has changed my whole life i have never been into depression after that and i have a lot of people you know say their life i think we can call it as i said earlier from people that is now they want to live again i think that is where i feel the whole uh thing comes together <laughs> where did you grow up you know how was life like for you you know in school uh in your younger years what was happening where was preet living what was life like for her at that time Hmm. So I am a girl from Haryana, a Punjabi girl from Haryana, and <laughs> but the so I was born in Lahore. It's a small town and very close to Delhi. I did my schooling there. I completed my post graduation from Lahore uh, College in MBA, and then I started working in 2000. How was my childhood? Honestly, it was very bad. <laughs> so when I spoke, uh, uh, you know, speak about trauma in earlier years, it was really, really bad. So this is why I didn't have any childhood. That is where you know uh, 
this led me to the journey of where I am right now. There were some issues, intense issues, and uh, again, it would be a long story. Whatever you are comfortable sharing, I want you to share because if you keep yourself hidden, only parts of yourself you will tell, then you'll sound like a salesman, and I don't want that to happen. When I was a child, like when I was studying, uh, I think uh, class third, uh, I had gone through a lot of issues in my family, and see, uh, it was more of a financial loss to begin with. More than that, you know, it went to a level where I was instead of, uh, you know, playing with the toys, I had to take care of responsibility of the house. As a child, instead of getting love of parents, I became the parent. I was presenting myself, I was presenting many other people in my house. I was taking care of them, I was inspiring them to live. Or oh, it could have been the other way around. I was a kid. And uh, then there was, you know, when I grew up, uh, because nobody in my family... Um, I come from a very, I would say, very conservative family. At that time, they were extremely conservative. And now, of course, you know, uh, I have helped them come out of that uh, box. And they have started adopting me, adapting, uh, you know, what I bring to uh, them as a person. So there was, uh, since we never spoke about, we never had sex education, we never spoke about the things that really mattered, how should a girl, you know, keep herself safe and how should... So I was uh, sort of put in a cage, literally put in a cage uh, in terms of uh, I was being treated as a person who is just supposed to shut up, who's supposed to do everything but who's supposed to shut up because I was a girl and I was so we, uh, I didn't even know the names of my own private parts. At that time, I was not supposed to hear what I wanted. I was not supposed to think. I, I learned, I remember that, uh, you know, I had started taking singing classes, but I had to stop because of the financial reasons at home. And I, as a child also, you know, I was early by taking tuition. So I was independent since the time I was a kid. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I had to leave my, uh, you know, singing chapter because uh, there was someone who never wanted me to sing. And the moment I started, used to sing, he used to tell me to just shut up. So I used to, you know, run to a small uh, room, which is more like a store house, a darker one. I used to sit like that and cry for hours. And, you know, uh, the tragedy, uh, tragedy was that it suppressed my voice for years. I was so scared to even say hi to anyone. I was so scared to even, you know, look into eyes of someone. I had all sorts of self-worth issues because I was rejected by 200 men, <laughs> 200 years. I still call it as a public exhibition, uh, you know, uh, wherein I was supposed to present myself nicely to them and I was being asked questions and then my, uh, my own family used to humiliate me and I used to say no. But no, that's not what I want. Every day, every night I used to sleep with the fear of rejection. Every day, every night I used to cry quietly with, uh, you know, like this. And uh, so things happened when my family went, uh, you know, to intense financial loss, not just once, but twice or four times because of some business issues and all. And uh, then there was a lot of uh, uh, not so good uh, implications of that. I had to save my, uh, myself as a girl because I was <laughs> uh, staying at a place where I never felt safe amongst people there, especially men. Uh, and uh, I had to save my parents. I literally had to drag them, you know, from all that abuse and stand like a stronger person all the time. Then when I uh, I had to leave my family in 2000 because I had to start early. So there was time when I never got time to spend, with, uh, you know, with my parents, with my family. I was always on the road of responsibility, do this, do this, do this, do this. And interestingly, I started uh, my career in IT industry. Until 2007, I was making good money and, you know, I kept giving it back to save my family. So, uh, it was a good feeling because things started improving. But, you know, all the conditioning of all those years, all the trauma of all those years, you know, led to a situation where uh, when I came to Delhi because I never had sex education. So, yes, I was physically abused uh, for six months by... <laughs> A medical practitioner on the pretext of, uh, you know, some medicine. And I was not aware of it, what he was doing. But he was the first person and, you know, where, who somehow 
uh, or I, I would rather say that situation really, really shook me from inside because I was getting nightmares all the time of that person coming over me. And uh, that's when I started searching about it. I started talking to people that like, what's happening and I, I realized, oh, this is what had happened to me. And I, was, I felt like, you know, so dumb, so broken, everything. And then many other chapters came, emotional issues also came. I was also <laughs> sort of, uh, you know, pushed into the wall by my own people sometimes. And I broke my nose and all those things happened. So there was so much happening. And then I think I had this wake-up call in 2016. Then I got a news from my home and my dad was almost uh, in bad shape put my hand like this and I said no more. <laughs> I said no more. This is not who I am. There is something else. And that is when, you know, I say that I got up, I dusted myself, my clothes and I was like, I am going to change this. I am going to create a life which is magical, which is full of, you know, love, which is full of confidence, which is full of healing, expression and which, which you know, uh, first smiles in other lives of other people. But before that, it also gives you those smiles that you never had on your life. That's when, you know, uh, so even before that, I, somewhere, uh, uh, I think around 2017, I had left my IT career because that is when it had started thinking me that, uh, you know, this is what, what I was meant to do. I was more of a people's person. I wanted to work more with the people than with the coding lines. And I want to go happily to work. Every morning, I don't want to quit. I know it was very difficult for me to take all those decisions. Of course, I started becoming the black sheep of the family. Like, you know, parents want you to earn and you are uh, here ready to, you know, take your own, uh, leave your job and do something of your own. And so you I'm, don't just, even uh, know. I'm just wondering, so this was a time when you had uh, finished your professional education, you had started working and you had been working in the IT uh, industry for a while now. And... This is the time where you had moved out of your house or you were still in your house? I had moved out. I had to leave my house in 2000 because I had to come to Delhi from Haryana to start working. So okay. I had left it and yeah, yeah. So it was in Delhi. All right. So you were a single lady working independently in Delhi doing your job? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so it must have been at least, at least some kind of a relief to be away from, you know, the the house or the home, which was not perfectly conducive to you as an individual, you as a child, right? Uh, so, so when you came to this new place, uh, you're saying there were more set of circumstances that were not favorable to you is what you're saying. Or was this yes. a PG or was this like some family home that you were living in? In Delhi? Yeah. No, uh, see, when I came here, initially I stayed with my relatives uh, in Delhi for a couple of years. Again, things were not very happy there for next like, to And But uh, after that, I started living independently. It was difficult, but yes, that is when my growth actually started happening. So this is, a, a, you know, this is why I wanted to get to this point is because a lot of people don't really know, uh, Preet, you know, what it is like to live alone. Uh, India mm. mein pe itna emotional and moral pressure dala jata hai ki, especially I mean women pe itna nahi hota, but men pe bahut, bahut zyada hota hai ki ka budhape mein sahara to tum hi uh, which is not wrong or right but what I'm saying is I'm encouraging you to think something else which is when you live independently even if it's for a few years even if it's for a short while if you're living in a house which is Maybe in the next block is your parents. But when you start living independently is when your actual individual growth starts happening, which is exactly what Preet just said right now. Absolutely. You know why? Because uh, if you have nobody around you, one, of course, you can focus on yourself. And it is important to know where it hurts. Because we always talk about physical hygiene, physical wounds. But what about the emotional wounds? You know, we really need to sit with them and close our eyes and see where it hurts. And we need to heal them and we need that space and comfort. Not just that we come closer to ourselves. We understand what we want, what we don't want. So yes, that space for ourselves is really important, even if it is for a shorter period of time. Now, if things are a little different, I go back to my family. I love them so much. It's a beautiful bond now. But yes, had I not... Uh, you know, stayed independently, I don't think I would have been able to come out of my cocoon. 
So yeah, and, and really I think great. sometimes uh, you know, I mean, I'm I'm not taking you know an experience away from you or from anyone else, but I also personally feel Preet that you know uh, sometimes it's not just the people or the situations. but it's us that we actually should have been focusing on when we're in these situations somehow you know these people and these situations take away so much of us that we don't have any of ourselves left for ourselves and when we kind of isolate ourselves the same thing actually happens when people travel as well you know uh, i am into motorcycles and i travel a lot i have a motorcycle gang as a matter of fact i'm a part of like 6 7 1s and we travel abhi to khair lockdown mein nahi ho raha but that is exactly what i've experienced when i travel as well that i get that me time i get that time to sort of introspect and wonder yaar ashish david itni sari cheeze kar raha hai kya ye sahi hai kya ye zaruri hai zaruri kya hai what is important what is keeping me away from my happiness so i think that kind of you know time away from uh these situations which just completely hold you down is very very important So so you know getting yeah. back to you know your story uh Preet tell us what was the next phase so you started uh, you know you were in Delhi all this was happening what happened next what happened next was as i said in 2016 i finally decided that i'm going to change my life it was enough and i want to live happily and i'll do whatever it takes no so i took a job call. oh yes i did that <laughs> <laughs> i mean i left my job in 2016 after and i was at a very high week and i was working as a training the department head there i left it and i started to uh, learn um, you know i did my first ever exhibition of art i had just learned art for i think 6 months in 2012 in 2016 i did my first exhibition i left my job where did the exhibition and um, from there a uh, lot of other things started happening i started writing more i started creating more and more of art and then i eventually realized that it was actually helping me transform and heal all my pain was eventually coming out from my art and i started dancing more i started expressing more i actually started taking charge of my life i would say that more intensely more meaningfully and doing things that i really wanted to do not just, not what others wanted me to do so uh, you uh, so you started uh, as a counselor or did you get some training in psychology or like did you learn this art like through some teacher and did were you like taking some dance lessons what were the things that you were doing tell us about that uh, until then i used to think like oh if i i don't have a certification nobody is going to listen to me or if i don't have a training nobody is going to value me i had all those doubts and and so many people also have that advantage <laughs> that i had was my uh, career in training learning and development of course i am certified in behavioral training and certified in neuro linguistic programming also which is a lot about uh, re- uh, changing the patterns in our mind which changes our life eventually so uh, that was definitely an added advantage but in terms of art i just took a uh, took training from uh, rohit sharma who is my art teacher so i took uh, he is he it the same dude uh, who takes classes in india habitat center yeah, he's the same yes. dude and him being is my teacher. guess who else uh, has also taken classes from him i'm sure many people and <laughs> i took it Months because I had to learn how to you know sketch and all that, but then I got myself into meditation. And while I was meditating, I started realizing that dance was also a form of meditation. I never learned dance from anyone except for attending one or two sessions. I started discovering my own dance form, and there was a moment I still remember. Uh, I think it was in two thousand twelve or thirteen. I went to Delhi Drum Circle. I actually came across Delhi Drum Circle. It's a Greek community, and so many people know about it. And somebody was playing beautiful flute, and I started uh, dancing on the beat and the concoction of the, uh, you know, jambes and flute. I went into trance. After that, I came home. I ended up creating a beautiful painting, and I was like, "Oh, what is this? What what's happening to me?" So that's where you know I started observing what is really changing inside me, what is making me create more. So a lot of things happen uh, from within instead of certification from outside. Then I realized 
that my art was actually telling me a lot about uh, what was going inside me. So I started learning a lot about art therapy online. I did that also. I started learning about it online. And so now what I do in my research is I combine all these forms, all my experience, all my certifications, all the learning, all the learning together and bring it forward. Lovely. And uh, I'm, I'm just actually thinking that, you know, uh, from getting all this, you know, feeling that you can do this and you can do that to actually doing it for corporates and, you know, to do it on a larger scale must have required a lot of organizing and, you know, sort of uh, checking all the boxes, doing a lot of background work as well. What was that like? See, many a times when we are, uh, let's say we start as a freelancer or we plan our own business, we are, sup- we are told that let's go with the strategic plan, let's go with, this, uh, you know, that logical thinking. I'm sure uh, that really helps to give us a structure and see marketing ethic or not, promotion ethic or not. Exactly. How to approach clients. But uh, there is one interesting element which I discovered in the last few years which is really helping me, you know, uh, do the work for clients and that's my inclusion. I have channelized that power tremendously that it keeps guiding me to the immediate next step then I make a plan after that. I do it the other way around. Okay. Because it, uh, so if I, you know, set an intention, okay, I want to launch X retreat. What do I do? But uh, who, who's going to be my next client? Or whom do I talk to? I meditate on that. And there are ways which I follow, which I'll soon be sharing with people through my other channel. So uh, that guides me to my next step. And then I further brainstorm on it. I further analyze it and create a strategy. I go the other way around and that is really, really powerful because that is where your creativity lies. And, you know, so while you were in Delhi, uh, like, so was your personal sort of circle strong enough? Because when I'm, so why I'm asking you this is because when you're coming from a place where you said you've been rejected by a hundred men, you know, there was abuse in the house, etc., etc., was was there a support system which helped you strengthen yourself so much that you could were enabled to do all these things? Uh, honestly, sometimes yes, sometimes absolutely no. I had a lot of friends in Delhi and initially even I came across people whom I thought they were friends, but I was not sure what their intention was. I, and I ended up, uh, you know, getting uh, very disappointed. Many of those were just looking for physical intimacy because they knew this girl is vulnerable. Right. She doesn't know anything about it and she stays alone. And, uh, so that broke my heart. And I was again like, whom do I trust? I have nobody. See, when I say physical intimacy, it's like, you know, uh, without conscience. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, you are talking something else, but there is some other intention. So be here with what you want. And um, so I, I'm talking in that context. I'm not saying it's just that it is, of course, a very beautiful thing. And I embrace it very nicely now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, of course, I I was never married. As I told you, I was rejected by 200 people at least. One, because of my height. And I was told that uh, you are a short-heighted person. And your how tall are you? If, if you don't mind me asking how... <laughs> I'm 5'1". Five, five and 5'1 five five one one. is fine. 5'1 five is nothing, nothing wrong with 5'1". Oh, I was asked like, you know, my sisters of those perspective groups that... Uh, and only then will you know will you take me in my house <laughs> and you'll have to leave your job and you know I was like I'm going to take a picture of you yeah so there were so many rejections one because of my dad you know family condition and all that of course you know people were not happy no, so nobody actually looked at who the girl was they looked at what everything else was and um Yes, of course, I had a uh, beautiful experience in terms of love. I was dating a guy in Delhi, of course, or from a distant religion, and my parents were, again, ready with their, you know. <laughs> uh, but now they're quite supportive. Now they're like, no, they understand me, and I feel very good about it. And, uh, of course, I get married to the right person when I come across anyone. Yeah. But yes, that love chapter, that love chapter, good that you pointed it out. You know, it's very interesting. It made me more creative because I went through beautiful emotions after years of nobody being, uh, you know, nobody asked me lovingly. My parents never hugged me in my life. 
Yes. I used to crave for that, you know. And uh, so suddenly I um, met someone in Delhi and we were dating uh, many of the people here also that we know about it. So we dated for a couple of years. It was a very beautiful bond. We still respect each other, but we are not long, you know, we are not dating each other because of some, uh, of course, reasons. <laughs> Everyone has their own path. Yes. So I respected it. And, yeah. I love myself. I take myself on dates. Yes. <laughs> I went to India. This lady told me if you can go to the movies alone and if you can go to restaurants and eat alone. And be absolutely cool with doing that without zero shame. You can pretty much do anything in the world, Ashish. And I actually thought, yar, baat to sahi hai. Because kai bar aisa hota hai na, pri, jaise movie dekhne ka man kar raha hai, thik hai? Aur uh, teri na sari friend bolin ki, yar, ye kya ghatiya movie hai? What rubbish? Ye koi movie hai? Ye to flop movie hai. Salman Khan ka bhaad mein mujhe achcha nahi lagta tu hi jaake dekh khair aisi bandiyan nahi hoti mostly jinko Salman Khan achcha nahi lagta but i'm just giving a hypothetical example okay and there are sometimes jab bhook lagti hai ki yaar man karta hai kahin jaake na wo wala chinese wala khana khana hai theek hai and koi bhi ullu ka patta aapka dost nahi taiyar jaane ke liye koi bhi nahi jayega and you're like shit man koi hai nahi to main akele to jaunga nahi but you know that girl said if you can change your mindset to go and watch movies alone and go and have food at restaurants alone you can do anything in the world and that blew my mind pre i was like whoa this is so true it's true and you know i was never doing that before i used to get upset ki wo mujhe mana kar raha hai ya hum hamesha bahar dekhte hain na ki koi aake hame kuch de But uh, thanks, I really want to mention one name here, who's uh, Dr. Gaurav Deka. He's uh, into inner child healing work, and unse I had a session with him last year, I think four years ago, about because my inner child was rejected, wounded, abandoned, and he taught me that you know, see, it's important to take yourself on the day. That's when the journey also started. I started taking myself on dates. I started telling good things to myself. जैसे आप किसी दूसरे से जो सुनना चाहते हो आई स्टार्टेड गिविंग ऑल दैट मच टू माय सेल्फ नाउ द क्वेश्चन दैट केम हियर वाज दैट पीस यू ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट सेल्फ लव सेल्फ लव इवन दिस यू नो बीइंग अ नार्सिसिस्ट इवन दिस बीइंग सेल्फिश आई एंड आई वाज लाइक इफ यू डू नॉट लव योरसेल्फ हाउ कैन यू लव अदर्स बिकॉज़ यू नो यू डोंट इवन नो हाउ टू लव एग्जैक्टली हाउ टू लव योरसेल्फ फुली and uh, i learned that the sense is maybe i'm bolte hai sense really eats out hai if you are looking at that god within you only then you can use that for not even filter that way to look uh, at others you become more compassionate you become more accepting and that's what self love is about i also feel you know pre that if you are not happy as an individual how can you be happy in a relationship mujhko lagta hai bahut sare log kya karte hai na their way to deal with baggage and trust me all of us have baggage uh their way to deal with the baggage is to be in a relationship and to throw it on somebody else right hote hain wo khush bahut sare log aise hote hain they are happy you know uh, here i uh, but they are happy only for a while because what they are doing is even i was doing that for years why i am not a mahatma or something and uh, It, you know there is a pain inside us there is a void and we think it uh, we expect the other person to fill it the moment that person fills it gives that feeling that we are seeking we are happy the moment that person goes we are back searching you know because we have not uh, worked on the baggage we're still moving we're trying to move ahead but with that void side to our feet yes. so we need to cut the pain and so and fill this void so that we are searching other people with completely with love love is like the art of cooking food in a kitchen dekhiye agar aap apne kitchen mein khana nahi bana sakte aap kisi aur ke ghar mein bhi jaake ka ghanta banane wale khana perfect metaphor mere hisab se main koi self help 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 nahi hu main bahut gyani aadmi nahi hu but mujhe itna pata hai ki bhaiya agar aap apne aap ko khush nahi rakh sakte and you can't have a fun time just being yourself there is no way in hell that you are going to be happy in a relationship as a matter of fact you are going to create hell for that other person so yeah. your best yahi hai agar kuch life mein panga banga ho raha hai aap preet ko message message karo usse counseling wagera lo 
ठीक है शी इज गोन टू मेक श्योर जो भी प्रॉब्लम है वो और बड़ी प्रॉब्लम हो जाए नो नो आई एम जस्ट किडिंग वी आर वी आर गिविंग प्रूफ प्रीत दैट वी आर हैप्पी एज वी आर you know so we are being examples of what we are talking about we are happy however we are so so preet you know uh, fine so all that was happening and then you started off your business you know uh, you use intuition as a met- method to sort of decide what is the next thing to be done how has that been working out tell us about what happened next sure. so i am going to launch a couple of more retreats also at the same time i am soon going to uh, debut myself as an author <laughs> I'm going to launch my book. Yeah, so they are actually going to tell people about all these things and how they can use it with sort of ease. How they can bring about bring out uh, their authenticity. That book is actually going to help people uh, unleash their creative spirit. At the same time, it's going to give have a healing impact on them after they start their journey with me. It's going to have that impact on them. All right. Because of this. <laughs> Superb. In all my interviews, uh, you know, I ask how our audience can practically do some things with your expertise because you're the expert, right? So, uh, Preet, you know, you've been a young girl in a home where situations were not favorable, right? There was mental abuse or whatever, like pressure and problems. Now. there might be somebody who's watching this show right now and who's going through the exact same issues as you were at that time what are the three things that you would tell them to do or not to do first very very important thing is expression unmask conceal whatever is inside you let it out because uh, why this is important is i also uh, you know had uh, this stuff Ready to fix in my body, and I got rid of them only after I started releasing my emotions. Correct. So and yeah, so journal, start journaling in the morning. Whatever comes to you, it's simple. Way I'm telling you, just get up in the morning and keep writing. Write it on a diary, laptop, whatever is there. Just let it out. Don't analyze. Don't do anything, and then maybe tear it away also if you want. Release deep clutter, deep clutter, deep clutter. Let that. Let go, let that sad emotion or whatever it is, let it go. Uh, that's very, very uh, important thing. Point so number one: thing. declutter, write a diary. Yes, absolutely. Second, do at least one thing every day which connects you with them. It could be active meditation, like a dance song, or painting, uh, or passive meditation, like simply sitting and doing the breathing. Start with ten minutes a day. Any time of the day you feel like your intuition tells you to sit there. Notice what's happening. Just do nothing. Simply observe what emotions are going inside you. Start doing it. Keep increasing that. You automatically begin to see a shift in your aura, in your energy. You begin to feel much, much, much calmer. It's like settling down the mud in the shaky water. And third is. Very powerful thing that has actually changed my life. Gratitude. Simply, uh, I mean, simply just uh, feel it. Don't just say that I am thankful for this. I am thankful for that. Are you really feeling it? Are you really feeling it? Even if it is one thing, sleep with gratitude. Sleep with good emotions. No matter what has happened in the day, let it go. But make sure the last thing that you think and say to yourself and to whom you are connected to, to the higher power, just say. I'm grateful for whatever it is, whatever you feel like talking about. In the morning, do this as the first thing. Do this heart say everything is going to be and so everything is going to be eventually. Point number three, gratitude. Yeah, jinki Angrezi itni achhi nahi hai. Matlab. मेरी थोड़ी बहुत है प्रीत की थोड़ी बहुत है बट अगर आपकी नहीं है तो नो प्रॉब्लम मैं आपको हिंदी में भी एक्सप्लेन कर दूंगा ग्रेटिट्यूड का मतलब है कि अब जैसे मैं यहाँ पे बैठा हूँ ठीक है वैसे तो मैं बैठा ही हूँ बट अगर मैं ग्रेटिट्यूड के साथ बैठा हूँ तो आई बी लाइक गॉड थैंक यू फॉर दिस माइक फॉर दिस कवर फॉर दिस स्टैंड फॉर दिस डेस्क फॉर दिस मतलब ये स्टूडियो की बात नहीं हो रही मतलब बात ये हो रही है कि आपकी जिंदगी में जो जो चीज़ें हैं ना जिनको आप टेक फॉर ग्रांटेड करते हो या नोटिस ही नहीं करते इमेजिन करो आप जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपके पास स्कूटी है आपके पास कम से कम स्कूटी तो है उस बंदे का सोचो जिसके पास साइकिल है और वो भी पंचर्ड या जिसके पास साइकिल ही नहीं है 
अब आप अपने आप को अगर हाली डेविडसन वाले साथ कंपेयर करते रहोगे तो ऑब्वियसली आपकी स्कूटी बेकार लेगी बट अगर आप अपने आप को उस बंदे से कंपेयर करोगे जिसके पास कुछ भी नहीं है तो आपको अच्छा लगेगा कि यार मेरे पास काफी कुछ है तो ये जो फीलिंग होती है ना कि मेरे पास काफी कुछ है भैया भगवान शुक्र है मेरे पास कम से कम इतना तो है यू नो यू माइट बी गेटिंग लाइक फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड अ मंथ मे बी एंड यू माइट बी लाइक यार ये क्या नौकरी है पर उस बंदे का सोचो ना यार जिसके पास नौकरी नहीं है सो दिस इज कॉल्ड द एटीट्यूड ऑफ ग्रेटिट्यूड वे यू काउंट योर ब्लेसिंग्स एंड यू कॉन्शियसली से यार माँ बाप के लिए थैंक यू घर के लिए थैंक यू छत के लिए थैंक यू पैसे के लिए थैंक यू बैंक बैलेंस के लिए थैंक यू मेरा फोन है पुराना कोई नहीं मतलब यू नो चलो दो तीन साल पुराना वाला आई है पर कम से कम फोन तो है चल तो रहा है नेटवर्क तो आ रहा है कम से कम टिंग टिंग करता है कोई लोग मुझे याद करते हैं ये बड़ी बात है so so you know these so these are the things that we have to understand and these are the things that we have to learn and keep in mind so if you are somebody who's in that kind of situation here are three tips and they didn't even you know like you didn't even have to pay any money for it man you got three free tips from preeti from preet sorry preet. i <laughs> yes it means love it means love <laughs> Right. So, uh, you know what is happening right now, Preet. Tell us about uh, what is the current phase of your life and what's up with in Preet's world. So, what's up in Preet's world is Preet is busy with her book, and I'm soon going to launch that. Right now, that is keeping me pretty busy. So, I'm working on uh, conceptualizing few more creative projects that I told earlier. So, I'm, and of course, you know, uh, taking care of my family for whatever possible way I'm able to. and uh, and sharing stories with people like you <laughs> yeah. superb uh, thank you so much for your time preet uh, you know you're a wonderful human being uh, god has uh, put you through some very difficult times which a lot of people might not have actually been able to survive but somehow he also gave you the strength god bolo universe bolo uh, you know the world gave you the strength to survive all that positively somehow you know uh you've taken all your weaknesses and you've made them into your greatest strengths i think uh, that is the biggest takeaway you know and you not just did it for yourself uh you picked yourself up you dusted yourself you've made yourself into a successful woman you have achieved a lot of your goals and you're on your way to achieving even more greater successes i think uh, that in itself is you know a huge huge achievement and i congratulate you for that tell us preet how has been your experience of being on the ashish david show it's a jhatkar <laughs> i love your vibe i totally love in the part of this you are amazing you and me you're doing what you're doing and keep smiling yes i love your energy <laughs> no, i i used to think like that oh i am not done these things stop comparing with anyone just be who you are compare yourself with the yourself you are the best Believe in yourself and give him a call and be there. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Preet. It was lovely talking to you. I hope the next time I talk to you, you have a bunch of more stories and we have even more fun on the conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you for making me a part of it. And thank you everyone for listening to me so patiently. And God bless you all. Stay safe and keep smiling. Bye. Bye.